Ahoy! While I generally enjoy the new patch a lot, and I especially absolutely love Starstone, unfortunately it also led to a few issues creeping into the game. I want to talk about a couple of them, so you're in the picture. This video was originally meant to go up yesterday, but since then a few new bugs were discovered. That's why today we had a first patch that is going to solve some of them. The first one is a fix to an issue where in rare cases players could be refunded more items than intended when trading post actions failed. And this also brings us to the first point that I was going to talk about yesterday, which is the trading post bug. Currently the trading post cannot be used. It is meant to be fixed at some point today, but it was not re-enabled with the patch. I'm fairly certain at this point the devs can enable and disable the trading post without having to put a patch up for that, so that they can do quicker emergency switches on that, and therefore this is also not coming with a patch, but rather will be a separate thing later. The reason that they're not enabling it yet is because they want to make sure that they ban everyone who has participated in this exploit, and that is what they're still working on right now. The server logs all transactions and that's very useful in this case. What made this exploit possible was manipulation of specific contracts in an error state on the trading post. So every exploit that has been done here has been done in context of the trading post, so it's fairly easy to track. According to the devs, only a small number of players attempted this, but out of an abundance of caution, they want to make sure that they get everyone and that's why they disabled the trading post as well for this. As you can see on my server, what happened is that people would dupe items that generally were already available in higher quantities. Apparently the higher the quantity of the item that was already existing, the easier it would be to execute this dupe. My server, Dallas, didn't get hit particularly hard, as you can see, it's only a couple of pages with these dupes, whereas especially some of the fresh start servers apparently got hit a lot harder. Apparently a ban wave already went out today, though I'm not entirely sure if that was related to this dupe or something else. The next fix is to the musket, which had a bug where it could become stuck aiming down sights when attempting to fire a shot in a sanctuary or town. The musket currently has a lot of problems. This patch changed some of the mechanics of the musket and apparently that broke a lot of things. So I can't tell you all of them in detail because some of them I was unable to verify myself, but it seems that there are at least certain bugs that prevent you from firing and that there also likely is an issue with dodging, firing afterwards and the sticky bomb. Really enough, not even all of them are reported on the forums yet. I'm gonna leave this stuff to people who specialize in the musket, but I can definitely tell you that the musket is in some ways currently not working as intended, so expect more fixes in the future. The next fix is to a client crash that could occur during or after a fast travel if other players were equipping weapons with accessories such as a bow quiver or a gauntlet's floating stone. Very interesting weird interaction. I experienced this quite a few times and I think it became very noticeable because so many people are around the fast travel points at the moment because of the winter event. And likewise, there was a client hang or freeze that could happen when fast traveling near a large number of players. Again, related to the same thing, obviously. Some people had an issue where they couldn't resume the Winter Convergence Festival questline under certain circumstances, and as a result of that, they also reset the questline for everyone. I don't know if it's still a reset if you fully completed it already, but if it did, then that's a lot of extra bonus rewards for those of you who have done it already. Considering the questline is super easy to do, I'm most certainly not complaining. The cooldown change for world transfers has been reverted back to 3 days, but will change to a 30 day cooldown in January and will affect anyone with an active transfer token. But those are just the fixes from the patch and unfortunately there are more bugs. The next issue is a very different one, but a very personal one to me. With the new patch there were some really cool changes to the throwing hatchet, allowing you to basically run forward and throw your hatches at the enemy without much interruption. In the context of that, the animations and the attack and cancel window of both rending throw and social distancing were adjusted. Unfortunately, this led to a very frustrating side effect. On the previous patch, you could throw hatchets, then weave these abilities in between and then keep throwing hatchets right after, as it's probably intended to be. So you could hold right click, do a left click to throw a hatchet, then do rending throw social distancing, keep holding the right click throughout, left click again and throw the next hatchet. On the new patch exactly this isn't possible anymore. 
Now, when you use rending throw or social distancing and left click afterwards while holding right click, you will instead do a light attack and likely just hit the air. In order to not have this happening, you have to wait after using one of these abilities until you go back into the animation where you pull your arm back and you go in the throwing hatchet position. Doing so, however, massively slows down your DPS because obviously you're delaying your next attack much longer than it was necessary on the old patch and at that point, with these abilities not doing much more than standard damage, you may honestly often be better off just not using the ability and just keeping on throwing hatchets instead so you don't have to wait and delay attacks. My impression is that this has something to do with the attack queuing being wrong, so when you use your left click while you're in one of these animations, it will register as a light attack that will perform after the ability as the next queued up attack without checking if you're also holding right click and without checking if you actually want to do a throwing attack instead. The interesting thing is that Infected Throw, which was not changed this patch, doesn't suffer from the same issue. Or rather, doesn't suffer from it a lot. It very, very rarely happens in comparison, but that's so rare that I would say that might just be an outlier case. Whereas with the other two, it always happens. A current workaround is to chain a throwing attack and then chain all three abilities after each other. So doing rending throw, then social distancing, or social distancing and then rending throw, and finishing off with infected throw, which allows you to go back into the throwing animation after because of infected throw working that way. But I'm fairly certain this is still a significant DPS loss compared to what you were able to do previously, because previously you could cancel every single thrown attack into an ability overall cutting down a lot of the animation times. I am really hoping that this one gets fixed soon because right now the throwing hatchet just feels extremely clunky when it was one of the most fun and fluid weapons on the previous patch. If you would like to see this fixed as fast as possible too, I made a bug report on the forums which I will link in the description in a pinned comment. Obviously interacting with that post would give this issue a little bit more attention. The third issue was a bit more of a random unexpected bug that they immediately resolved in a way that I think is very much understandable. One of the new things introduced with the new patch was the 72 hour war cooldown after leaving a company, likewise the lock on gaining influence for a company. This change went live as intended, but it also activated retroactively meaning anyone who changed in the days right before this patch went live would have had this cooldown as well, and that part was not intended. Because of that, they temporarily disabled this cooldown again, so that if you switch right before the patch, you would not have any issues. However, this will be re-enabled on the 11th of December. I honestly think that people who switched last minute were gambling with this risk already, and it is a bit funny that they are kind of getting rewarded for it, but at the same time I can see that some people probably only saw the patch notes very shortly before the patch went live, maybe smaller companies that don't pay that close attention to war changes and didn't know about it yet, so for them I guess it's fair enough. It is somewhat frustrating for the attacking companies that planned ahead and scheduled attacks for after the patch. They were the ones that were technically on top of things here and obviously were preparing to finally punish the shell companies. They were obviously expecting to be met by B teams and were now still met by A teams. This is obviously just a minor setback that will resolve itself in a couple of days, but these are days where the companies with a lot of shell companies still get rewarded, which I don't think is necessary. But it is what it is. In the next days we'll talk about some interesting farm changes that came with this patch, so if you'd like to see that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Also, there will be a Starstone guide soon. Thanks for watching, Duke Sloth, out.